I'm Paul Bechtel. Today, I'm going to teach you how to do a decal layout using the iColor 560 printer and the iColor AquaClear paper. Let's go ahead and get started. Once you decide what casting you're going to use, you're going to want to take a picture at a perfect 90 degree angle. The ones up above with the Camaro, those are the shots you want of the car in black. You don't want to take an angled shot like the gasser down below at a 45 degree angle. It's, you're not going to be able to really place the decals very well. Let's go ahead and have a beverage of your choice. It's time to start the autopsy. <laughs> So here I have a template of the 55 Gasser. This is the car that I decided to do. And this is going to wind up being a lot of fun. Now you can use whatever design software that you want. I happen to be using a design software called Vinyl Master Pro. Now the background of this car is going to be in black. Um, that's, the, that's the base coat that I'm going to use. And then we're going to go in and design the decals for a client that I have. This is the subject here. It's a hot sauce called Zombie Snot from the Hellfire Company. Now they've got a line of about 60 or so hot sauces, so whatever your taste is, it's actually pretty, you know, it, there's a wide array of products. Now I've already had some of the stuff designed already because I've done projects for them before. The first thing I want to do is I want to put some green flames on the base of the car. As you'll see here now since this is a PNG file I can treat it like a bitmap and as I get it fit to the car I can erase or eliminate some of the overlap of the decals now you have to make sure that the size of your template is the size of the car that you're using and in this case with the gasser it's 70.5 millimeters now all the measurements are the same the, the two sides and the car looking down from the top is the same exact measurement, 70.5 millimeters. Now since this is a hot sauce, we're going to copy that file and we're going to flip it around in the opposite direction and lay it on the car. Now a PNG file has the background eliminated, so you don't have to worry about drawing around something, which is a big problem for a lot of people. Now you can use Corel Draw, you can use Adobe Illustrator, some people use Adobe Photoshop. I use Corel Draw, I also use my uh, sign software called Vinyl Master Pro. Now the Vinyl Master Pro program is approximately four to five hundred dollars and I've had it for a long time because my wife and I owned a sign shop. So here I am putting the name of the company on there and going to bring it to the front. Now we're going to size it appropriately. Once you get the decal sized or the background that you want, make sure you copy it and put it on the opposite side of the car. So it's the same exact measurement. You don't want to be guessing at this because it'll look awkward. Now I also bring these guidelines from the side and guidelines from the top to make sure that the things that I'm placing on the car are in the exact same location. I'll copy the Hellfire logo and I'll bring that down and line it up. Now I use that little bump on the hood there and that's, that's what I use to, to line up my Hellfire name. Once you don't need those anymore, you can go ahead and highlight them and delete them. Now these uh, lines are available in pretty much every, every standard design program. We'll bring the Chevy logo over. And we'll size that appropriately. That's looking pretty good. Now we're going to line that up with the, with the front end of that bump that I was just telling you about. Copy it and paste it and move that up to the same portion of the car. Designing these cars is a lot of fun and I've got no secrets to hide folks. So if you got questions, put them in the comments. I do my best to get back to you and answer your questions. 
Now we're going to put 327 Chevy on there. You can put anything. You can put Chevy. You can put Dodge. I mean, it is a Chevy car, but whatever you decide. If you want to put a 427 or a 454 or whatever, doesn't matter. It's up to you. That's looking good. But then again, like I said, make sure you use the same decal and copy it and paste it because it'll be the exact same size. This is really starting to come together. Now, again, if you go online and you do a search for like STP decals or anything like that, just use PNG, okay, and, and use that type of file because the background is already removed. Now, there is a way to remove the background, but I'll be bringing that up in another video. Looking awesome. Now, the Hellfire Hot Sauces, they have won several awards. And here we're going to use that emblem on the back of the car. I think they've won over 50 awards, maybe more than 60 by now. But uh, the, the hot sauce is fantastic. It's, it's great. I mean, it's got heat, yes, but it's got a lot of flavor, too. And they've got a, a, a complete array of different sauces, all the way from mild to absolutely wild to stupid hot. But it depends on your taste. Now, here's the logo from the bottle. I absolutely love this logo because I'm into Halloween and stuff like that. And I know this is going to look awesome. Make sure you got your measurements right on the top of the car. This one here, it's approximately 18.5 to 19 millimeters wide and about 24 millimeters up and down. Now, you can have bigger designs, but you're going to have to measure it out really close to make sure that it fits properly. Here, we're going to put that Hot Sauce uh, Award logo on there again on the back of the car, just to fill in the empty spaces. That's looking pretty awesome. I love the layout, that looks really cool. Now, one of the things here, like I said, is I'm measuring the length of the car, and this is the gasser I'm going to put it on. And as I measure it, like I said, it's 70.5 millimeters. So when you size your template, make sure you size it to the right size of the car so the decals or the measurements that you put on the car, when you put your decals on there, are going to fit properly. This is 19.3. But, or 19.1, but you don't want to go all the way out to the edge. You want to have a little bit less so you don't have your decal overhanging on the top of the car. Here's your length. That says 25 and a half. Now that would be from very end to very end. So I, I narrow it down to like 24. Here's the measurement I was telling you about, 70.5 for the length of the car. Make sure you highlight the entire thing and then type in 70.5. That'll bring it down to the proper size for when you reproduce your decals. And make sure you do that for all, all the car, the, the two sides and the top. Now, if you have a car that's got a big area on the back or something like that, you're going to have to make sure that your measurements are proper for that. Like if you had a pickup truck for a tailgate or a dairy delivery or something like that. Now, make sure you go in and save your work because eventually, if you haven't saved it, it's gonna, something's going to mess up and you're going to delete something and then you're going to wind up saying some curse words. I'm bringing the size down in this one because I want it to fit properly. You don't want, again, you don't want too much overhang here. This is really starting to come together. Now I'm going to select everything and I'm going to copy it 
and I'm going to make a separate page. I'm going to leave those ones alone that I just designed. I'm going to bring them over to a new page, and that's when I'm going to start to eliminate the background portions of the car that I'm not going to be using. Let's delete the car itself, so all that's left is the decals. Little pieces of the windshield there were showing up, and they didn't show up because they're white. Again, we're getting rid of the back portions of the car, the little tail light and all that. Now make sure you group these items also because if you move them and you forget to select something, it's going to get everything out of whack. You want to make sure that it's in the proper area. Now I designed my decals to where all I got to do is cut out the wheel wells and then cut, cut the decal as close as you possibly can to the artwork itself. That way there you don't have a lot of overhang. But I try my best to cut out the area where the wheel wells are so you don't have to deal with that. Now that I got this all set up, I'm going to print these on regular paper. The reason I print these on regular paper is because when you design this stuff, the sheets of decal material are a little bit on the pricey side. Approximately a dollar to two dollars a sheet, depending on where you get them. So I'm going to print them on paper, and then I'm going to cut them out, and I'm going to size them up on the outside of the car that I plan on putting them on. That way there, if there's any mistakes or any measurements that I have to change, I know how to do that right then and there instead of printing the decal sheet. So here's the cutouts of the paper that I, that I printed out. Here's the gasser. Let's check the logo on top. And you see how that fits really nice. Now if you want to make this a little bigger, you can, but I think it's going to be fine the way it is. There's a little bit of gap there. But again, like I said, you could print this a little larger if you wanted to. That looks awesome. Here's the logo for the trunk. That fits on there really nice. And here's the logo for the side. See how everything fits. The flames and the logo in the back, the logo on the door, the 327 Chevy, and the flames on the bottom. Now if you want to cut out both sides of the, uh, the doors and like that so you can print them out. Now here we're using the iColor 560 and we're using the iColor 560 paper. It's got a blue backing material, so if you print white, you'll be able to see it. If you're interested in one of these printers, let me know. I have up to a $500 coupon available to where if you decide to get one of these, I'll help you out. Now, if you've got questions and like that, get a hold of me and we'll answer them. Now, these Hellfire logos, the zombie snot, look fantastic. Here's the base of the car, or the body of the car. We got the decals in there. Now I put these on a sponge, and the reason I do that is so they don't float away when, you're in the, when they're in the water. Nothing's more frustrating than reaching in to get your decal and it mushes all up on itself because it was floating away in the water. Now a lot of times, I'll also make two sets of decals or get two sets of decals for my car. That way there, if I do make a mistake, I've got another backup set in case I gotta replace something. Now if you don't and it turns out great, you've got another set of decals for another car in the future. Once you get a position where you want to, make sure you hold on to it and then wipe out all the excess water from underneath the decal. Sometimes you just have to tap it in place to remove the water, but do your best with a Q-tip now, if you, use, if you use something sharp, you're liable to cut the decal, so be careful. Now, here you could use 
micro set. That'll help your decal adhere to the car better. And if you got some complex curves or heavy stuff like doorknobs or uh, door hinges or gas tank covers and like that, you can use Microsol once it dries out and that will help you make the decal fit into those tight locations or those complex curves. A little bit of water or Microset. Let's go ahead and put that decal on top of the car. Now putting the fluid on top of the roof will allow you to move the decal if you absolutely need to. Once it's in the position you want, then go ahead and use that Q-tip and squeegee out the excess water. Now you might get some wrinkles here. If you do, do your best to smooth them out. And if you have to later, just come back in with some water or the micro set. And if it's really uh, a hard uh, raise in the, in the material there, then go ahead and use the Microsol. That will soften up the decal and allow it to lay flat. That looks excellent. Look at that. Let's put that logo on the back. That fills it up really nice. Now here I'm using my tweezers to move it around. Again, if you use a sharp object like this, you're liable to rip a hole in your decal. So either use a Q-tip or a toothpick or something like that, and you'll be able to move it around. If it isn't moving like the way you want, then go ahead and put some more water on it or more Microset. Now again, the Microset or the Microsol is going to soften that decal. So if you put too much on there, you're liable to stretch that decal out or actually make it melt. That looks fantastic. Let's move on. After we clear coated it and everything and painted the interior, this is how it turned out. And I also printed a card to make it match. This looks absolutely fantastic, folks. Now again, if you have any questions or you got anything out of this video, hit the like button, mash that subscribe button, and we'll do some more videos in the very near future. I want to thank you for joining me today on Diecast Graveyard. This was a lot of fun, and I do enjoy sharing these things with you to make your diecast hobby come across better and improve your skills. My name is Paul with Diecast Graveyard, or as they call me, Uncle Paulie. You have a great day, and cheers.